Ah, oh, hello there. And how is everybody doing today? Are you all well? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me? Oh, yes, I'm doing wonderful. All except for the weather outside, which is one degree, overcast, cloudy, damp, miserable, and it's getting into my joints. A little bit of arthritis, but you know what? That's not going to stop me flying today. I'm ready to do a flight. And where are we off to today, you ask? Well, Captain GL, he wrote me. Are you there, Captain? Well, you wrote me, do you remember? And you asked if I could do a flight between Amsterdam and Innsbruck. Hmm. Well, Amsterdam isn't any better in weather than we are, but Innsbruck might be a quite a surprise because Innsbruck is in the middle of the mountains and it's at the bottom of a valley. So yes, let's do that flight, shall we? Now, I got some excellent scenery for Amsterdam. That's E-H-A-M. And it's made by Fly Tampa. Beautiful designs, very detailed, lots of activity there. The Innsbruck L-O-W-I scenery is by Just Sim. And the nice thing about what they did is not only is the airport itself detailed, but they've got all of the mountains that surround it really in detail. It's beautiful area there. And so that's what we will do. We'll follow Transavia Airlines. Now they have a couple of flights that go in and out of there each day and we'll follow flight 6605. 6605. And if you want to look it up, you go to Flight Aware and put in HV, that's Hotel Victor 6605 and it will come up with all of the history. So I think that's a grand idea. So are you ready to go fly with me today? I'd love to have you on board. I've got all that complimentary champagne and caviar just waiting to be consumed. Are you ready? Good. All right then, Captain GL, join me, why don't you, in the pre-flight room and let's have a look at the weather, make ourselves a flight plan, and then set our Navigraph charts up, okay? Well, here we are in Flight Aware. Here you can see Transavia Airlines 6605. And here are the designators down below. This particular flight is a historic flight. It landed over two days ago. The one for today hasn't taken off yet. And it says that it took off from Amsterdam, but it doesn't give a gate. But we have a way of finding out about things like that. And again, it landed in Innsbruck and says it landed on time. So the flight was on time. And this is the route that it took. And let's have a look at this. There's Amsterdam, pretty much a straight run all the way down here. And then it looks like it made a turn to go in in that direction into Innsbruck. Now, looking at the flight, cruise flight level, they were at 39,000 feet. I don't know what we will be getting, but we'll have a look. This, by the way, is a Boeing 737 800. It's exactly, see this, where it says B738? That's the 737-800, just the same as Ryanair 186. 
And here it says the taxi time at Amsterdam was 12 minutes and the taxi time in Innsbruck was two. <laughs> well, when you see Innsbruck Airport, it's not a very big one, so it's not no surprise there. So there's the information that we have. The actual distance is 436 nautical miles. All right, let's go into Windy. Let's see what the weather is like. Now, here's the weather for Amsterdam. Oh, you can see that the general wind is blowing across from the east. Wind 0705 knots varying. Oh, well, there's all sorts of things that can happen there. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. But clouds are overcast at 1700 feet. Temperature is 4 degrees. Well, at least they are warmer than we are here in England. But here's the significant thing. Look at this. Q&H is 1034. Very high pressure. That is high pressure. And here's the other critical thing. Minimum VFR. So it may be closed. It may, we may not be able to do a VFR departure today, but we'll have to have a look. Here's the runways. Now, we will be parked somewhere in this vicinity. This is, this is Terminal C, Charlie. And this is the area that all the Transavia flights go in and out of. So we'll be parked somewhere here. Now, as to which runway we're going to depart on, I don't know. It will depend on ATC. But let's have a look at our destination. Here we are. Here's Innsbruck. Look at this. All these mountains surrounding. And there's Innsbruck right at the bottom of the valley. And it says wind variable two, uh, two knots. Ceiling and visibility. Okay. In other words, clear as a bell. Again, there is some high pressure in the area. But it is VFR. My guess is going to be that we'll be coming in on runway 26. And I'll tell you in a little bit how I came up with that information. Because I have a new way of looking at things. I'm going to show you that today. Over here, I'm going to click now on Flight Radar 24. I'm doing this because this is the route of flight HV6605 and this shows when it turned on its transponder and when it turned it off. So everything that from the time that the transponder was turned on is recorded. So here you can see that it was in this Charlie section of the airport. And so that's the reason why we'll be parked in one of these stands. And here you can see it taxied out and took off here. It took off from a, a section. It didn't go all the way to the end of the runway, but did a, a mid-runway departure, which is possible. Not always granted, but um, 737s generally like to have as much runway as possible, just in case there is a, an issue. Here's the actual Transavia aircraft itself. You can see it right here. Now I'm going to go down and just follow this route all the way to its destination. There it is. Look at all the mountains surrounding this area. So it came in here. It went down the valley and landed right here on runway 26. Then it taxied and came in at this particular stand at the main ramp. Now, I want to show you something I've discovered with Flight Radar 24. Here it is. I'm going to click on this. This is the live view. 
This is the live view. So I'm looking now down here. This is the general area and sweeping up here. There's the threshold of runway 26 right there, right up here. But I wanted to zoom in because I wanted to see, by the way, this is um, a webcam. Now, see this? That's the windsock. So that's going to tell me that right now the conditions are the same and runway 26 is in operation. But look at the scenery all the way around. Isn't that magnificent? This is beautiful scenery. Wow. So this is the view of the airport from the webcam. Isn't that great? Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because I wanted to be able to see that windsock to tell me and confirm which runway was in operation. Now that you can see the real scenery, you can compare it with the scenery from Flight Sim when we get in. All right, let's go in here and we need to make ourselves a flight plan. So we are Ryanair, we are 186. We're departing from Eham and we're going to go to, to Lowy. And there is the alternate that it's given us. I don't recognize that at the minute, but we'll see it in a moment. Our airframe is this one. There's our registration, cruise profile six. It says the scheduled flight time is 1 hour 40, departure runway is 09. Ah, this is predicting a 08 arrival. Hmm, I'm not sure that that would be the case since all the other flights I've looked at this morning are all going to be on 26. So I'm going to change that to 26. We are full. We have one ton of complimentary caviar and champagne. And then here, this is the entire flight route that we'll need to put into the FMC. Now going down, there's the entire route. Oh, it looks like Basel. Basel Mulhouse, that is the alternate should things go pear-shaped at Innsbruck. So it comes down, comes into the RTT, the Rattenberg NDB uh, approach for a landing. And I'm presuming, I am actually going to be presuming that we will be on runway 26. All right, let's go up and... Let's save this. I've not put in a flight altitude. We'll see what it gives us. And then we'll generate the flight plan and see what information we get. Well, this has given us a cruise altitude of 33,000 feet, which is good. Air time is one hour and eight minutes. And there's the block fuel. Here's the departure Sid and here's the the Tulsa 3A is the approaching star. It says planned optimum flight level. In other words, weight, balance, wind, temperature, airspeed, all of that has been calculated by Simbrief to give us the best performance. And that is our route. So going down there's our uh, RYR 186 and here's the flight level that we have and right here is the routing and LS 
LFSB is the alternate. Over here, we're going to need to know it. Cost index. We'll need to know the average wind. Down here, we've got the fuel that we're going to need to put on board. Here's the reserves of 2,937. And there's the trip and taxi amount. No tankering recommended, it says. And here is the full designated route. And if is the, this is the one that we actually do make today without any uh, side tours, I'll post this then in the information box below the video. Here's the descent. We will need to know the speed and direction of the wind at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. We'll need to know it at 15,000 feet and at 10,000 feet. Going all the way down, we'll have a look at the general weather. There's no frontal movements. So it looks like it's a pretty straightforward flight. And, oh, this is nice. We're going to have a tailwind. Oh, I like tailwinds. Yeah, look at that. This is flight level 340, closest to the one that we'll be taking. And this is tailwinds all the way in. Well, I've been good. It's about time I had a tailwind. And here we go. There's the the flight profile all the way from Amsterdam, climb up to here, top of climb, top of descent, and then straight down. There's the RTT where we'll make the final approach, and there's Lowy Innsbruck. This wavy line, this is the troposphere, and we will not be going high enough to enter the troposphere at this flight. All right, time to go into Navigraph charts and build the charts that we're going to need for our flight. Click Flights, click New Flight, click From Sim Brief, and we use the latest one that we just made. Up here, we'll click on Open the Charts List. We're going to need the airport. So here's the airport scenery. I will pin it. We'll need to have the parking stands and the parking stand coordinates. Here's the parking stands. We'll be in one of these. I suspect it will be, if we can, it will be the Charlie 13 or the Charlie 11. I'm not sure which one it will be. It depends on which is clear when we get there. And then it will be the Rendon 2N departure. And here it is. This is the departure profile. So I'm going to pin that. So it is also down at the bottom here. Go all the way over now to Innsbruck. Open up the charts. We'll need the airport information. I'll pin it. We will need then the Tulsa 3. So let me show this as an overlay. So this is the coming into the Tulsa 3 right here, the Rattenberg, and then straight down here. I'm going to now go to runway 26 and here we are, localizer uh, uh, runway 26. Let's have a look, put this up and pin that. So it looks like when we get to Rattenberg, we go down here and then we make our descent all the way into the runway at that angle. And here you can see the profile. And it looks like this is going to be a, 
a pretty steep descent all the way down from 9,500 feet and there are waypoints all the way down we will need to check as we make our approach. Since we're coming in on the RTT localizer R runway, we'll put that in. So now it's joined up the flight plan so this will appear nice and neat on our charts. All right, let's go up here and just take this off. Now you can see how the route is. All right, Captain GL, are you happy with this? Looks like we may have an interesting flight on today. An interesting flight from muggy, awful weather in Amsterdam, but clear, clear, sharp, clear skies over Innsbruck. So if you're ready, let's go on into the cockpit and let's get ourselves started, shall we? Ah, oh, hello there, Captain GL. Do come in, take your seat. You've been in here before, so you know where everything is at. And are you all set? You're looking very smart in your Ryanair 186 uniform. So let's get ourselves all set up, shall we? We are here at Amsterdam, that's E-H-A-M. And this is a very, very detailed and excellent scenery. This is by Fly Temper. It's a lovely, lovely scenery. Very detailed. There's lots of kamikaze vehicles around though. So, um, <clears throat> and buses that seem to uh, go all the way through concrete pillars. <laughs> well, that's interesting. We'll have to watch out for those. We are at stand C13, C13, 13. I know that's not necessarily a lucky number, but we are going to do all right today. The weather is loaded. The flight plan is loaded. It's not looking too bad at the minute, so we may be VFR after all. I've been around and I've checked all the surfaces. I've made sure that there's no detritus anywhere, no imperfections in the fuselage. I kicked the tires, made sure everything was looking good and the fuel is on board. So we are ready to go. Are you ready? Then let's do it. Okay, first thing we do, turn on the battery, check that we have enough voltage to do the next step, which is to turn on the fuel pumps and then start the APU and the APU as you know is that auxiliary power unit which is in the tail of the aircraft it's going to generate the electricity that we need in order to run not only everything in here but also power the galley and the electric lights in there and the emergency lights everything in fact ah the engine gas temperature is rising the low oil pressure light has gone off. <coughs> Excuse me. And it will start to come down in just a moment. When it does, this will turn blue. When this turns blue, it will mean that we have 115 volts being generated by the auxiliary power unit. There it is. So I'm going to switch now from the batteries to the APU and that's showing that we now have hundred and fifteen volts so go up here and turn on the IRS that's the GPS system and there are two to make sure that we have our fixed position on the earth exactly turn on the galley always hope that the they will get us a cup of tea there's the emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seatbelts. 
Over here, we'll turn on the left and the right window heat. It's not a particularly warm day, so I'm going to turn on the probes and uh, make sure that the ground down there keep their hands off of them. And then turn on the hydraulic pumps. I notice here that the forward service hatch light and the equipment light is on. Those are the stairs and the hatch. So, and our self-loading cargo is getting ready to board. Now over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the recirculating fans, the isolation fans, the left and right pack, and all of a sudden we can hear the rush of the air coming from the compressors and the engine in the tail of the aircraft that is now warming the aircraft because outside it's only four degrees here oh excuse me three degrees now it's three degrees it's dropped it was four degrees earlier now it's only three so it's a cold day here in Amsterdam and then of course I'm going to turn on the steady light to make sure all the ground personnel know that we are in here and that we are getting ourselves programmed. It's re we are ready now to program the FMC. And just checking out that we have the latest air rack, everything is good, the programs are good. So clear the, that and go to the position. And we are at EHAM, so A-E-H-A-M. And we are at gate C13. So I'll put in here Charlie 13. See if it comes up. And it does. Now to check, we're going to go into the coordinates and look at the C13 and see if it matches. It says it should be 52.18.3, 52.18.3, and 4.46.1. And 4.46.1 is correct. So we will put that in. That is our location. Go to the route. So we start out with E-H-A-M. Destination L-O-W-I. We are flight number R-Y-R-186. and go down to next page and here's now where we put in the flight plan. Well where first point is going to be EDUPO so EDUPO and then we take the Zulu 739 Zulu 739 and then that will take us to MISGO, M-I-S-G-O, then we go direct to PODIP, so P-O-D-I-P, -O then we go direct to Bombay, B O M B I. And then we take the Tango 104. So Tango 104. And that will take us to WLD. WLD. Next page. Then we take the Mike 867. Mike. 867 and then that will go to Bavax B A V A X and then we take the Zulu 106 Zulu 106 that will take us then to Manal 
M-A-N-A-L. And then we take the Mic 736. Mic 736. And that will take us to Tulsi. T-U-L-S-I. That's correct. And activate. Execute. Right, we have that information. Now I'm going to go to the fix. I'm going to put L-O-W-I as our destination. We'll want a four mile radius, a 10 mile radius, and we'll want a 30 mile radius circle around our destination. Go to forecast. Now let's have a look at the charts for this because we want to make sure that we get the proper information here. The transition level is set by the ATC and the transition altitude is also set by the ATC so we will leave the transition level as it is. But we are going to need the descent information for these three elevations, altitudes, flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100. The barometric pressure at our destination is 1030 at the moment. 1030. And the wind speed and direction at 20,000 feet is 352 at 24. 352 at 24. And then at 150, it is 347 at 22, at 22. And then at 10,000 feet, it is 331 at 14, 331 at 14. Good, execute that. Now, departures. This is where we're going to need to tune in to the ATIS here and find out what is the active runway? What is going on? So, Shippo Atis is 122.2. Shippo Airport Information, Sierra 1237, Zulu, Wind 109er at 5, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, ceiling 1600, overcast, temperature 3, dew point, altimeter 0, 1, 0, 3, 4. landing and departing runway 27, runway 25 left. Runway 25 center, runway 25 right, runway 24, runway 23 left, runway 23 right, runway 22, runway 21, runway 20, runway 19 left, runway 19 right, runway 18, runway 18 center, runway 18 right and runway 18 left. VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Sierra. Well, we have Sierra, but there's just so many runways which are active, I'm not sure which one we are going to be able to be cleared for. I don't know if we can get runway 24, but if we can, it would be handy because it's very close to us. So let's get ourselves organized here. We're going to be departing to the south, so let's request a taxi clearance and see what we get. So. Taxi clearance to the south. Skipple ground, Ryanair 186 with Sierra request taxi for takeoff departure to the south. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at runway 24 via taxiway Alpha Alpha 8, Sierra 7, contact tower on 121.65 when ready. Taxi, hold short, runway 24, using taxiway Alpha Alpha 8, Sierra 7, Ryanair 186. Right, we are good to go on runway 24 which is right next to us we can handle that as for the departure well that is going to be let's see the rendy to sierra departure so select runway 24 and then look down the list here for rendy 
Two Sierra, that's this one, and put that in. Now for our arrivals, we're still proposing coming in on localizer 26. Transition RTT and the will be coming in on the Tulsa 3 Alpha approach. So Tulsa 3 Alpha right there. And execute that. Now we go to legs and I'm going to switch this to plan so that we can follow this route around and see that we have no breaks or discontinuity. So I'm going to step through each of these points. There's our departures, Randy going all the way down. Everything is looking good so far. And a lot of waypoints on this. It's a longish flight, but there we are getting close. And there's the RTT. And there it is coming all the way in all the way into low way on runway 26. Okay, we have a good plan. So, I'm now going to turn on the yaw damper, see that the flight continuity light goes out, and it did. I'm going to turn on the weather radar for me, data. How about yours, Captain? Shall I put the terrain on yours? This is going to be very important with all those mountains and we'll get the data as well for you now we'll turn on the TCAS switch on the RTO for skid anti the auto brake and everything is looking good so far everybody's on board so we'll bring up the stairs and close the hatch There you can hear the stairs retracting. The forward hatch is closed and secured and in a moment, good, that is now secured. Right, we're looking good. So now I'm going to go to root and perform the initialization. Now our plan fuel is reserves of 2,937 and the trip and taxi is 3,179. That comes to 6,116 kilograms of fuel or 6.1. So I'm going to put 6.1 in here. The reserves 2,937, that comes close to 2.9. So 2.9 in reserves. Double click zero fuel weight here twice, and it will make the calculations. Cost index is six. Our cruise altitude is 33, zero. That's up there. The average wind is 302 at 30. 302 at 30 is average wind. We'll leave transition altitude as it is. N1 limit is 3 degrees outside. Woo, cold, isn't it? Takeoff, we'll do flaps 10. Center of gravity, just double click that and it will calculate the center of gravity and tell me what value to put in the trim wheel for takeoff. And then over here, one click each on these to give me the value for V1, rotate, and V2. So now I'm going to put in the information I need into the MCP. Since we're departing on runway 24, the, I need to set the course for 237. So I'll just put 237 in here I'll put 237 in our heading here and 237 in yours is that all right captain there we go 
We'll be flying at 33,000 feet today, so I'm going to put the pressure up to 33 here. And our landing airport elevation is 1,907. So 1,900 I'll put into here. So that will be the barometric pressure when we open the hatch at Innsbruck. So we have that in place. And I'll put this here as well. Okay, we have that now. And the max speed is 146. 146. Now let's just check this. Put the flight director on here, flight director on there. Press the V nav, press the L nav. I have a green light on both. It's calculated it and it is a good flight plan. On the throttle and click on the VOR. I think we are about ready. Now, when we depart, we will need to go out and have our nose go to the right because we need to go out there and then backwards to get to the end of runway 24. Is that okay? You follow that? Okay, good. You can go. That's good. All right. Right, I've just spun up the information for the decision height, which I do by turning this knob and then looking down here on this screen to make sure I've got 2250 because that is the decision height that we are going to need when we make our approach into Innsbruck. Okay, I think that we are just about ready. And we are following Transavia flight 6605. So this this is all set up. We're all set and ready. So, let's do the check. Fuel is correct. Windows locked all around. Seatbelt signs are on. Door lights are out. Check. MCP is programmed. CDU pre-flight is complete. Rudder air along trim. Taxi takeoff briefing. We've done that. Anti-collision light is now on. So we're ready to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback and turn our nose. So, are you ready? Okay. So I go in here, go into pushback. We want to turn our nose to the right, so all of this is correct. And right. Are you set there, Captain? Everything is looking good? Okay. All right, then which engine would you like to start today? Number one or number two? Oh, you like to start number two? Okay. All right, then let's get ourselves going. Go ahead. Okay. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Park brakes off. Parking brake is off. So now I have to turn the heat off, turn the blowers off, so I've got enough compressed air to be able to spin the engines. And I'm going to be starting with engine number two first. Brakes released, here we go. Here we go. Switching to engine number two. And the start valve has opened. The engine is starting to spin up. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. Everything is looking good so far. It's spinning nicely. No hang-ups. And there's 24. Bring in the fuel. And building up very nicely. The engine gas temperature is coming up. Looking for the and the low oil pressure light has gone out. We should hear the engines in a moment. Once they ignite, there, 
The engines have ignited. And we're looking for 115 volts up here, which we have. So now I'm going to switch to generator one and I'm going to start engine number one. The start valve has opened. The N2 is spinning up. Push back complete, parking brake please. Parking brake is on. Brake set. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There it is, there's the fuel going in. The engine right, gas temperature is good one up. Slip release from guidance on your left, have a good flight. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. It did. We're having a good climb on the engine gas temperature. This little red tick mark on both of them, when that little tick mark goes out, then I know I've got consistent generators power coming from the main engines. So there it is. The engines have ignited and stabilizing, looking good. Good, that tick mark has gone out. So now I can go up here and turn on the main, the bus to go to the main engines. Now turn the heat blowers back on again, turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. Now I'm going to turn on the taxi lights and we'll do our check and go to flaps 10 while we're doing that. So generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice not required at the moment, isolation valve is correct, start levers idle detent, light deck door closed and locked, recall, check light controls checked, flaps, we have green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake is correct, on, and ground speed, ground speed brake lever down and detent, ground equipment, yes it is clear, so we are ready to taxi, right I have the map is now working, and you should be able to see that just down to the bottom right. And we can see what our route is going to be to be able to get to the end of the active runway for us. So that's out, down here, and then swing round to the right. All right, everything's looking good. We'll take off the brakes. And keep our eyes peeled for these kamikaze vehicles around. Oof. No speed limit for them. So here we go. a very detailed airport but in reality this is also a very busy airport here when we get to Alpha 8 that's the one that we'll need to turn down into that should be coming up here Shuffle ground orbit minor one three minor taxi to begin orbit minor one three minor taxi to gain kilo one one using taxi one november and two, there's the sierra two, seven that's the one that we need taxi to gain kilo one one via taxi one november two echo five echo four golf two orbit minor one three minor keep our eyes peeled for any traffic around here Yeah, we are. This is the 
Sierra 7, hold short at runway 24. So we'll go to this point and hold. Tune into the tower. Okay, now we'll request taxi and take off turns. Tower, Ryanair 186, Lydia, runway 24, departure to lead south. Ryanair 186, on short, runway 24, traffic is Airbus A321 on final. On short, runway 24, Ryanair 186. Well, we're holding short for traffic coming in. Right, take off briefing, you reviewed, engine bleeds are on. And start switches continuous, cabin is secure. We'll turn on the lights in preparation. Turn on the position light to strobe. And as soon as we get ready to move out, I'll turn on the, and start the clock. But there's somebody coming in on final and I can't see them, so they are on their way in. But while I'm waiting, I may as well take some video of the airport scenery. Just look how detailed this is. Isn't this amazing? Very realistic. And over there is the KLM. Wonderfully detailed scenery here. And here's that aircraft coming in. Once he's landed and cleared the runway, we will then be able to move into position to take off. World Travel Center Minor 31, exit runway when able. Ah, it's turning off, so we're not doing too bad. Should be travel seven minor three one. Contact ground on one two one point seven. Ryanair one eight six. Clear for takeoff. Runway two four. One two one point seven four. World travel seven minor three one. Cleared for takeoff. Runway two four. Ryanair one eight six. We are cleared for takeoff. But still keep our eyes peeled, make sure that there's nothing coming and that we are clear. Here we are moving into 24. have a long enough runway so advance the power to N1 power is good toga buttons push and we have full power Detail of the airport there. B1 rotate. B1 rotate. 
can see, we are surrounded by mountains. Let me tell you where we are. We are 26 DME miles from our destination, and which is out there somewhere. I've already got the lights are on. I'm putting the engine start switches on. Fasten seatbelt signs are already on. We're on course and we have clearance to land. But look at how beautiful all of these mountains are. Just so long as we don't run into any of them, eh? Okay, so, I've got your setup for the profile coming in, and I'm now gonna go to flaps five. When we get to RTT, which is Rettenberg, at that particular point we need to make some very precise changes in our altitude our, and our attitude. We need to make sure that we are ready and set for landing. Here we are, we're making our turn. We are at Rattenburg. So, as soon as we level out, I'm going to go gear down, I'm going to go flaps 25. When we get to Adwig and we start our approach, because it is a steep approach, I want to make sure that we have everything set for our descent, that we have a maintained average good descent. We need to be 9,500 feet at Adwig. That's our final fix. And then 254 degrees. I've got 254 set on here. So I'm going to turn this to 254. So we are all set to go. As soon as we get to Adwig and we make our final approach, I'm going to try to lock on to the localizer. As I say, this is going to be an interesting, interesting approach. Because I've got all of these mountains all so close by and we'll be making our turn in just a second here. We are holding our course, everything is looking good so far, but these mountains <laughs> They do seem very, very close, so let's try not to land on any of them. Alright, here we go. Now we're making our approach and I'm locking on to the localizer. At this particular point, So I'm going to go and switch to 
holding it. We're holding our speed. Although the mountains are quite close, we are going down the valley and the airport is, at the, is in sight at the bottom. But you can see that there's not much margin for error here. And there's the airport in the bottom, at the bottom of the valley. Right, I'm right on course. up on this 
decision height in a moment. Right, going to pull flaps.
What's the matter with these kamikazes? Pulled right in front of us even. And there it is, there's Bluthafen in Spruch. So I suppose we just turn in and park where we want to park. Wow. And brake on and engines off. Lights are off, TCAS is off, engines winding down, IRS off, galley off, oh, more emergency exit lights off. Door is opening, stairs are going down. Just gorgeous scenery. Wow. And fuel off, APU off, power off, and shutdown is complete. Let me take some video here. There's the Innsbruck Airport Tower, mountains behind, there's the terminal building, very detailed, and over there is the arrival gate, mountains behind, look at all of that, just Stupendous views. Wow. Well, we made it. We landed. It was a very good landing, even if I do say so myself. And although the air traffic control was a little bit miffed that he hadn't told us that we could land, we landed anyway because we are Ryanair 186 and resistance is futile. <laughs> but you saw earlier the real views of Innsbruck from that live webcam that they had. And so now you've been able to see how that matches and marries with this gorgeous view that we get from P3D. I know a lot of people talk and talk and talk about Microsoft Fly Simulator and all the rest of it. Perhaps it is better in some respects, but I'm pretty impressed with this. I really am. I really am impressed. So, Captain GL, I hope that you enjoyed the flight. We finally did break out of all the cloud cover that was covering most of Northern Europe after we got past Frankfurt. So this is real live weather at the moment and it is like this in Innsbruck for real. And I really, are, really enjoyed this flight. This was really quite good. I did enjoy this. So thank you for suggesting it. And I will see you all next week with another flight on Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.